Welcome to my basement, everybody. Hey. Actually, this is Scott Jones' uh, hotel room yeah. in Montreal. As we discussed Very intimate. on last week's podcast, we are going to be traveling yes. for a little bit here, and that means we're going to have to take the basement on the road, and so our definition of what qualifies as a basement will uh, have to be loose and fast, and so we are in my hotel room. Yep. What do you guys think? You like what I've done with the well, place? Well, thank you for bringing the smell of the basement with you into this hotel. <laughs> Maybe the smell of the basement... Is just my smell. It's not good. It might just it be, be my. Now listen, you, we've made it this far into the podcast. You yeah. haven't talked about our sponsor yet, Mister Sony PlayStation and the PlayStation Four. Come on down, you're what? our sponsor. Why um, is it Mister? Why is it gender specific? Why can't it just be gender neutral? That's what hit me first. But uh, yeah, the Sony PlayStation Four is our sponsor, and we have to thank Sony. When is we... that thing coming out? It is coming out November fifteenth. How much is that? It's only four hundred bucks. How many food stamps do you pretty, need to buy that? Pretty good deal. Do you have food stamps in Canada? I think we probably do. That's a really tragic way to think about how do you you'd buy your video game console. Mm. But it's coming. It's mm. it's racing toward it is coming. towards us like, like a, a freight meteor, train. Right? I you love it. You yes. can't stop it. You can run the but juggernaut you can't hide from the PlayStation Four. This is going to be Sony perfection. All yeah. of the mistakes of the PlayStation Three. And can I go ahead and say that there, yeah. there were some mistakes made? Of course. They've said that. They're going to fix it. Well, that's what it feels like, this right? All, we don't have the thing yet, but it, it, everything we've seen, it looks like they're doing a lot of incredible things to make this really a kick-ass machine. All right. Well, we are in uh, one of the world's most beautiful cities. Yes, we are. And we, we wandered. We had uh, we went to old Montreal mm-hmm. today, and we mm-hmm. wandered around there, and we stopped in uh, Le Bagel Shop, and uh, we had <laughs> that's Le what it's called. Un Café. We're going to offend everybody that's listening to this well, we're not, podcast in Quebec right now. We're but English. We, Speakers. Yeah, we're not francophones, and we apologize. Um, I was born in Montreal, though, and okay. I love this. Start city. at the beginning. You were a share, son of a sharecropper. <laughs> no, I was. Uh, <laughs> my mom actually worked in computers back in the day. She worked in a bank, and she worked in computers. I think she worked for IBM for a while. She had the old punch card thing. She was Jesus. working all that stuff. That's back a company. Then. Does she have some stock in that company? No. No, yeah. she was an underling. And then uh, my father was uh, going to school out here. And they were hippies, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a pretty cool town for hippies back in the day. So there was, you, you know, I think like a lot of relationships, it was like a hippie and also somebody that was a little more practical. And uh, right. but it didn't last. Well, we I don't were, know my dad at all. We were walking around today, which yeah. is which is sad. Yeah. Um, but we were walking around today, and I said, "Do you have any memories of Montreal from when you were a kid? And you were a baby when you were here, and all you said was two words: snow cave." Yeah, snow cave. I do remember one and I'm sure this happens every winter, but six feet of snow in our front yard, hmm. and they had to build a cave to get from the the front of the house to the street, to the hmm. uh, car. And it was just a cave of snow all the way around us. And when you're a little child looking up at all that thing, it just was... It was like, uh, you know, Game of Thrones or something. It Are was you sure incredible. that wasn't a level of uh, Super Mario Brothers? No, that actually happened in that real life. That was not the snow life. level? And I also lived in Windsor, Ontario for oh. uh, so not that long. I think I lived there for only six months when we returned from Mexico. This is turning into my life story. But, uh, yeah, Montreal. Well, you have history here. That's what I you're do, trying to I tell I do, and I love this people. city, and I love coming here so much. And we always fantasize, not that we're a couple, and I don't want to imply that about buying property well, and relocating here. Well, we're partners on, on a couple of TV shows. We're always in front of the camera together. And, uh, yeah, th- it would be pretty cool to be here more. I like it here. Like I, I would be down for coming Especially here Especially old Montreal. And you're going to yeah, see a lot beautiful. of old Montreal as we uh, near the end of our top 100 list in the video game department. That's right. We just wound things up today, yeah. and those those are not going to air. It's weird to say this for a couple of months, months yeah. Yeah, at this point. Yeah. But we know the number one game. We did the t- final top 10. We came to this exotic yeah. city, yeah. and our plan is... We did all the games today. We're going to do all the movies yep. when we go to Tokyo, which so is coming I'm, up. I'm revealing here. it. Congratulations, Blasto. You are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Blasto? What is Blasto? I don't even know what Blasto, <laughs> Blasto is. Blasto was a terrible PlayStation oh, like, 1 game. You're getting comfortable here <laughs> yeah. in my room now. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I got keep, kind of a, keep asking me questions about my life. Yeah, Vic, Vic I'm just going to turn gone this into prone. therapy. Yeah. <laughs> 
So yeah, the old part of the city is beautiful. Last night you uh, had dinner. Your wife and uh, and your baby are here. Your family's here, and you yep. ran into an old friend. Yeah, Billy Campbell is here. Oh, shooting, uh, Billy Campbell. Helix and Sam Witwer, who we know as well. He was Star Killer in uh, in Force Unleashed. Mm-hmm. He's shooting uh, his show, Being Human, here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Batman is being made here. There's mm-hmm. a lot of incredible. A lot reasons. of things happening. Yeah, I was born here. Vic was born here. Yeah, Mont-, Mont Royal Hospital, mm-hmm. and uh, I got it. I. I I think about my mom walking around with me as a little kid, and now mm. I get to walk around the city with my little kid. You know, oh, and it's, I thought you were going to say me and my big kid, but no, yeah. it's uh, it's profound because yeah, I, and I thought about that a couple of years ago when I was here. I called my mom, and I, it's uh, it's emotional for me, you know, because I just think she was so young when she had me, and mm. and. Uh, had no money and she had to take care of a kid and and uh you know i know how tough it is to raise a kid now a little bit you know i can't wait for your tv movie <laughs> Victor lucas story now you know what's funny walking around here you know we obviously we're based in vancouver which is a lovely city yep and i've grown very fond of vancouver and been very proud to call it my home for the last four or five years yeah in case you weren't aware canada is a goddamn beautiful country mm, it, it is i mean there's just so much gorgeous real estate across this country. There's so much incredible stuff to see. What I love about this, though, is it reminds me of how Vancouver is still kind of in search of its own soul yeah. and identity. Because the, Doesn't the have old, the history. Especially the old, yeah, the old part of the city is great. You'll be walking along, and it's a hot day here. Yeah. We're out there. We're laboring in the yeah. sun. Sweat is pouring down our yeah. faces. We had to reapply our makeup several times. Yeah, my hair my hairspray Your hair melted. Your hairspray hair. melted. Yes, yeah. that's right. And um, uh, But you walk by these buildings, and you you can f- feel this cool air coming off the buildings, and that's what old buildings do. They have this cool core at the center right. of them, and th- it's just from being around and because they're made of stone, and and you just fe- you know you don't feel that in Vancouver. They're permanent, and they're permanent. You, you that's can't, what you feel in yeah, some of these older you cities. You down. feel like yeah. yeah, they've been here forever, and they will right. be here forever. And it's uh, it's not Constructionville. We, there aren't cranes up every two feet, which you see in a lot of, a lot of other cities. Toronto's going through that. Vancouver's always going through that. Uh, you know, and certainly there are big uh, parts of Montreal that are always being uh, worked on. And yeah. the city's ever expanding. It's become a hub for video games and, and media development of all yeah. kinds. Uh, but yeah, there is this this core, this this permanent core when you come to this city and it's the roots of our country, you know? So it's, uh, it's, it's really important that Canadians come here. I, I love really how everyone way. speaks uh, French here too. Like it's yeah. just, everyone defaults to French yep. wherever you are in the city. And I love, and this know, is the anglicized city. This is the city that caters, you know, most, uh, readily to anglophones and to tourists and, and to people that don't speak French. Uh, but yeah, the the default language obviously here is French, and and uh, and rightly so. And I think that the, the the French part of our heritage is something that we always need to celebrate and and uh, and extend out there. And I, frankly, I, being born here and not being able to speak French is an embarrassment for me. I hate that I don't, you know. Let's and I plan to look, put my daughter into French immersion. Yeah, let's. Why don't you and I? Take, take some, some French, French courses together. Yeah. yeah, we'll start doing reviews we'll, on Francais. We'll, we'll uh, shoot part of the show out here sometime. I feel like a turd burglar whenever these people ask me something in French, and yeah. I'm like, no, I'm going to speak English. What does a turd burglar feel like, exactly? Someone who burgles turds. <laughs> <laughs> what, what an <laughs> occupation. Don't, they don't <laughs> that feel, is awesome. You don't feel good. It's not a good <laughs> feeling. I wouldn't recommend going into that, it. So that would be like the lowest form of burglary. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the echelon of burgling. Yeah. Things to if steal. If you are no. stealing turd. Yeah. You've really hit rock bottom. Yeah, let's talk. Um, let's talk about video games. You yes. know, we are coming up on a, a Grand Theft Auto. It's almost Grand Theft I Auto wanna, Eve. I want to talk about Diablo three. Oh Jesus! All okay, right, we'll just take quick. over the whole podcast. Well, just right, because it, we're the PlayStation four is coming, and that's going to be one of the first, you know, games that we can pit against each other. You know, we can take a look at what the the difference is, and I have no idea what the difference is yet. I haven't really sat you know, down. They're with just the they're going to be ports. That's all they're going to be in well, the beginning. That's what they be always upgraded. are. It's got to look cooler i mean Watch Dogs already looks better on the ps4 eh. and the xbox one and and same with uh, assassin's creed i hate these discussions about games looking better 
but this is that's it, not the future. It, I know, but it's the taste of you know the kind of uh, horsepower and the kinds of tools and the kinds of things that the developers are going to have for All us. All right. Well, Diablo Three is obviously out for the PlayStation Three and the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Yeah, and our just, complaint is that it doesn't look as good as uh, as the just PC because it's stretched Mac. out on our yeah, giant but screen TVs. Now, with the horsepower of these new, but machines, it doesn't look terrible. It's going to look it's, better than the PC. It's still a beautiful game. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it still looks great. Yeah, but and, it looks and great, it runs in, great in uh, in this. In yes, it does. But it looks great in the way that you know Marvel Ultimate Alliance Two looked pretty damn great that's on the, Xbox that's, 360. That's the genre, though. You have yeah. to pull the camera out to that three quarter kind of tilt. And uh, what what I can't get over is uh, is I've been through this game once, and I'm, I'm going through it again, and it's it's gripping a second time. I like I don't know what Blizzard does. I don't know what kind of deal they've made with the devil el mm. diablo himself mm. yes but they have because there's something so addictive because, about this and thing. honestly every game rips diablo off but you still get sucked right back into diablo i this, mean you play this game yeah. in myriad reinterpretations but still when you play the original or the source game you go oh my god i can't oh, i'm stuck in like diablo mainlining the best stuff I know. Right? It's like incredible. it's it's pure and uncut and you you know i mean i was I, this is the way i'm playing it i'm just doing it's, one quest a night it's the Walter White version of the. Of it is. The it's like the blue. RPG. It's the blue, <laughs> it's the blue video game. Yeah. <laughs> but so you're awesome. playing one mission on a night. Yeah, I'm doing a quest tonight. Yeah. I go in, I do my quest, and you know, I, I kind of look forward to it. I get home, I got a lot going on. We're traveling, we got all kinds of stuff we're working on at yeah. work for everybody. And uh, I get home, and it's like time. It's time for my quest. I got to go off into this field, and uh, and I got to walk around and see if there's a, a secret hole somewhere. Yeah. This is starting to sound like uh, my first marriage. Um, <laughs> And I did you ever find to... the secret hole? <laughs> Maybe the key to you not having a, <laughs> a did, first I'm marriage for so long. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> and then there's some witch that's barfing up other creatures, and and yeah, man, it's fun. God, it's all fun. right, we're, we're gonna forget all about Diablo 3 like next week. I know it's good because yeah. Grand Theft Auto will yeah. arrive, and our what, we will what have chance does Grand any other Theft game Amnesia. Have? Yeah, get it? Yes. Exactly, GTA. right? GTA. Totally. It's going to come because in Because that's stop. what happens. That's every, the meteor every, that's coming. And, yet, you know, it's so funny, too, because every other uh, fran- every other game out there, they just get away from it. Well, They're like, you? don't go near that Tuesday. Wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, honestly. like, Just it, concede that to Rockstar. You can feel like the world is is like like bracing. <laughs> like the whole, whole, all of planet Earth is bracing for people not being at work. People, you know, being half asleep because they've stayed up all night playing the game the night before. When is Rockstar going to make a shitty game? When? I don't know. Like, they have been doing it for so long. They I, have know, to crack at some I point. I mean, it's not a company, right? I mean, here's the thing. The, the, uh, the, the misidentification that happens with these corporate uh, uh, kind of allegiances that we have and these expectations that we have with corporations, uh, it's people. Right. So when Rockstar makes a shitty game is when the core leaders of their company decide to go off and start their own games and start their own business. And if that happens, if there are a mass exodus, because for whatever reason, and I'm not I'm not hoping that this happens or predicting that it will. But that's when Rockstar will start to make shitty games. People make games and the people that Rockstar has, I hope. You know, can we hear about the nightmares? But I hope that they're being treated well because they're making games that we are de- we are depending on and expecting to be incredible. And generally, they have been, and we want that to continue. So hopefully, they are being treated well. But we're seeing, and you know, this brings up an excellent point with uh, with this week being an example. I think uh, uniformly, the Apple announcement around the iPhone 5C and 5S is a disappointing one. I think people wanted more. And I think in the era of Steve Jobs, and I, I don't mean to discredit all of the work that's gone into the 5S or the 5C, but I think in the era of Steve Jobs, we would have got more. We would have had a bigger announcement. It would not have been such a predictable, um, you, you know, just a basically, you know, saying that all the leaks were true. I mean, that's what this this conference was this week. And I, I can't remember the last Apple conference that was underwhelming like this yeah it just feels like it was kind of met with a collective sigh well the stock price took a hit yeah i think that's a reflection and i know that they're they're making uh this 5c move so that they can appeal to uh, the chinese market and to to put the the iphone into uh uh, more consumers hands and they still want to maintain profit on on the phone it's still priced fairly 
fairly high if they're trying to compete with some of the lower cost phones and stuff out there. But it is kind of amazing to see that as much as we rally around logos and ideas and brands and everything, it's people. And the yeah. PlayStation is another example of that too. I mean, this, this was a company that has had dramatic shifts at the top and a lot of rethinking on the way that they're bringing out their new platform. Lot, I mean, uh, Mark Cerny leading the, the sort of, uh, you know, the console infrastructure and the, the operating system and the way that this was going to speak to developers, that's profound. That's a huge change. And Shu Yoshida, who, you know, has uh, really, I think, led uh, an excellent team of, uh, of developer engagement, you know, with uh, partners uh, and colleagues like Adam Boys and stuff, and, and bringing in David Perry with Gaikai. This is a company that put a whole bunch of new people at the forefront of announcing their console, and it's a dramatic rethink now. You know, there's a there's a whole bunch of people out there that are th are saying, "Wow, this is a different PlayStation than the last life cycle." Yeah. You know, and it really is. I mean, we always get lost in these monolithic terms that we think that these these uh, brands have the power. You know. But it's the people behind the brands that have the power. And once those people are mistreated or misaligned or they depart, I mean, look what happened to Rare. Rare was one of the most powerful video game companies in the world. Well, look at what's, what uh, Nintendo is going through right now. You know, like they're having some ups and downs. And, yeah. and uh, I mean, you can look towards the people. It's not, not the Nintendo brand. It's not their history. It, it's this moment in time. And, and right. I think you're right. And I think Sam and Dan, ha Dan Hauser and what they've done at Rockstar and what they've been able to accomplish over and over again for so many years. And and I know it's controversial. The way they run their business there is, is not the way that a traditional company of any kind runs its business. Well, that's, that's us on the outside <clears throat> with conjecture, you know, and speculation because they're so private, you know, and we hear the, the, the you know, the complaints bubble up from people that are, that leave, you know, and I'm not saying that this stuff isn't true, I'm just saying we don't know enough, but my hope is that they are able to deliver at this quality because they are, for the most part, treating their people well. That's my hope, you know? Well, we don't know. We, can, we, we don't can't know. even we speculate, can't speculate it one no, way or but, the but other. But listen, this, let's talk about our grand theft fears, GTFs. Yes. And my worry is, after 2008, like, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I haven't fucking finished a Grand Theft Auto game since 2002. Right. I finished three. I finished Vice City. Right. I love them both to death. San Andreas was too much game. Yeah. There was too many goddamn things in that game, too many yeah. components, too many, too many options, too many wheels turning. And I just, and, and you know what also happened? I reached a saturation point with the drive here, pick up that guy, well, drop him off, were, shoot those guys, drive here, One year and then after do that. the next too, right? So it was well, bang, bang, bang. Well, it, was it was almost it was too much. 2001, 2002, then 2004, I think, was right. San Andreas. And then, Plus all the copycats, though. And then two things. Yeah, we were playing a lot more. I mean, open even world the Jack and Baxter that. games were open world at that point, for sure. You know? And so I'm, I'm just, you know, even and I have to admit, Grand Theft Auto Four, I liked it a lot. I had a lot of fun meeting Nico Bellic. I loved the soundtrack. Yeah. I loved the reimagining of Liberty City. I loved yeah. all of it. Loved the attitude. And uh, but I didn't get through it. I, yeah. I get, at a certain point, I'm just like, I feel like I've done this mission too many fucking times before. I actually, and I'm worried it's going to happen again with GTA Five. I actually appreciated where they went with the biker level, and I forgot the name of that uh the dlc you remember mm -hmm. the, the extra content i love that that was Isn't fantastic that the ballad of gay tony that was also terrific but it, it was the biker one that really kind of resonated because it was so unique and we were into this other part of organized crime that wasn't really that well represented in video games which i really like and i, I really think that that was if if it didn't influence sons of anarchy it's really funny timing on that whole thing um, and I might be misspeaking. I don't know the whole histories and all this stuff, but it really feels like it led to the creation of Sons of Anarchy and the like openness. Something like Lost and the Damned. Or the something. Lost and Damned, yeah, yeah, that was excellent. Uh, but then it was Red Dead Redemption that I think really kind of uh, you know ushered in this uh, new wave of of you know one to one engagement with your character because I think the mechanics in Red Dead are much better than they are in Grand Theft, and I would say that even with L.A. Noir, even though there's some hitchy. Uh, stuff in L.A. Noir, it was still a little bit easier to kind of... Well, even the mechanics in 2000 and the GTA 4 were kind of a step that's back. That's what I'm saying, yeah. yeah the, GTA the driving 4, controls were getting just, twitchier. Especially when you play it now, right? You go back and you jump into that world now, just him walking down the hallways, he lo he just felt like he was a bit of a, a drunk, you know? I mean, it just it felt a little weird, and there was so much 
I don't know. I mean, th that game kind of kicked me in the nuts sometimes, and I felt like I had to start a mission over that went on forever, and I hope that some of that stuff gets fixed. In Red Dead, I never really felt that exasperation. I felt like that there was a, a, a much... Uh, more refined way into the mission trees and, and getting through the experience. And I hope it's sort of more you know, aligned to that in I've 5. I've always had this theory that, that games, especially open world games, uh, they, you almost need an editor to oversee everything, to tell right. you what you need in the game and what you don't need in the game. And this is something that our mutual friend, Jason Brackman, yeah. uh, who works as a game developer, he calls it the, and I stole this from him, but it's the two refrigerator theory. If yeah. you went and you bought a house... And that house had two refrigerators in it. You probably wouldn't get rid of the second refrigerator. You'd say, yeah, I'll just put my salami and my beer in that second refrigerator. It'll be my salami and beer refrigerator. And the re first refrigerator, I'll just use as my normal refrigerator. Right. And I think that's what happens a lot when you're building so quickly the way you are when you're making these open world games. You build a lot of shit that you don't really need. And then they don't want to throw it away. So they keep it in the game. And so you end up with a lot of... What feels like uh, you know tedious task, you end up with a lot of tire spinning, pun intended, for the GTA games, and you end up doing a lot of stuff that isn't that compelling. Now, if you just took the game and pared it down to its most compelling moments, you'd have a pretty scintillating six to eight hours. Instead, they they sometimes bloat these things where they're 40, 50 hours, maybe you know more than that, and that's you know maybe twenty hours too many. Just just pare it down to its essence, and I hope. That GTA V does that. I hope there's not too I, much I, of the stuff we've done too many times before. I, I don't want to have deja vu when I, I play I this I think thing. this is the uh, this is going to be the test for this game. They don't want to be predictable, right? They want to now usher in right. what will be the future for the franchise. They know they're going to make the sale. What they need more than the sale is the goodwill for the future. They don't want us to know the the predictable paths and the and the routines just the fact that we're switching between the characters is incredibly significant uh i think that the online stuff is going to be very refined and very um uh inventive and i think um they've learned a lot with mechanics over the last couple of open world experiences that they've created i think it is going to be too much game i think it's going to be you know something that's going to take hundreds of hours in order to see everything. But I, I also think that this is one of those kinds of games that is the only one that a lot of people will buy in 2013. You know, this is the, this is the title well, that people sure. will rally around. And they want that customer, and they want that customer to feel uh, uh, placated and satisfied. And they're at that upper echelon. You know, they're at the very, very top of sort of expecting the consumer to get off their ass and go to a store and buy this $60 or more, if you go to the collector's thing, uh, experience and make this a, a, a hollowed collectible in their house, you know? And there aren't that many games out there that can still command that attention, you know, especially as we're moving into more um, digital download space and all of these different kinds of pricing structures that are fluctuating all the time. I, you know, I think in the next five or 10 years, we're going to see very few quadruple A experiences like this that can set the price wherever they want and they're still going to be able to deliver. But this is the linchpin. If this is a game that, it, you know, in its grand scheme, underwhelms. <laughs> I, you know, consumers are going to shy away from that kind of thing again. I, you know, I, I start to worry that maybe the open world genre, maybe we've gone as far as we can go. Because mm. if we go back to, I mean, maybe I'm sure the city will be beautiful. It's going to have all kinds of beautiful buildings and vistas and things to explore and find. But if we're just doing the same kind of stuff that we've been doing for for 15 years now. Yeah. I don't know if I want to do it anymore. If you guys can't think of more fun shit for me to do in your beautiful city, I don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. And I think this this is a moment. I think this is where we find out if maybe this is as far as open world games can go at this point I, I got to tell you, when I see the trailers, and that's as far as we got, we, I, we don't, don't have know, the though. game We yet. don't know. When I see the trailers and they say that that's on a PlayStation 3, I just slap my forehead. I just cannot believe that they're running that. I mean, that's what they're telling everybody. Is that's running off PS3 architecture. It just looks ridiculous. It looks like every game is smeared into that one thing. You know, I, I, I would also, I, this is also, I think, 
This this is the most important release in five years, I would say, in video games. One of. This, is, I think, this is the most important well, I mean, moment the, we've had in a the, long time. The speculation is that it's the most expensive <clears throat> video game that's been ever that's ever been created. I think that the um, the uneasiness in the marketplace, in the traditional video game marketplace, uh, has been very prominent in, uh, especially in video game news and video game journalist circles and stuff on websites that, that sort of cater to that audience. And I think this is the, uh, the game that, if it's as great as we all hope it is, we'll just shut everybody up and, and we'll all just say, holy I shit. I want to be shut up. Yeah, yeah. Tri- AAA is g- never going to die and we need this kind of stuff and I- we need to be, uh, you know, never taking our foot off of the gas uh, on our appreciation for what a huge team can assemble and and uh, blow our minds with, you know. I hope this is the first GTA game I've finished since two thousand two. Right. I want to. I want to sit down. I want to not be able. I have a GTA put, three story. I want. I want to not be able to put the controller down. Tell me your story. Well, I, I we we have to take a look at it a little bit because we're going to appreciate it in the game, or, or, or the, you know, in, in GTA five week we're going to appreciate the uh, the launch of the game with with the show, of course. And uh, so it was put on the list. You guys sent me, you and Rob, our, our producer, sent me about uh, uh, looking at GTA 3. And I could have downloaded it on PSN, but I, I thought, why don't I just get this on the Nexus? I got the Nexus 7, and I, um, I wanted to test out uh, a MOGA controller, which is, uh, they sent me one of these Android controller things. It is awesome. Five bucks to download it for the Android and play it on this little 16 by nine tablet with this controller that actually the, they sent me the pro one, I think it's like 50 bucks. The, the controller is really well built, but I am totally lost in this world immediately. There's no, none of the, 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 you know, the touchscreen fumbling, none of that bullshit. You are totally back transported to the game's launch Everything's a little bit more sort of glossy because the screen size is smaller and it's got up-res polygons and everything. It just is such a phenomenal game. And to, to see that Rockstar did that with the, the very first of their, you know, 3D behind-the-character experiences with Grand Theft Auto, just is staggering, man. This no. is, it's still incredible. It's no. still so important and fun to play. Tell everybody what you told me. That, uh, what, what did I tell you? You didn't finish GTA 3. Yeah, that I didn't finish GTA 3. But when you it keep first saying that you are going to finish it now with this new setup, playing it on your Nexus, I think this is Nexus a, 7 this and is your Muga yeah. controller. And you know what? We're going to keep going. We're going to revisit this next week. We're going to keep gonna, G- GTA 3 watch to see if Victor <laughs> finishes GTA 3 yeah, we've from had 2001. All of these, these GTA games since then. But uh, it was so excellent right from right out of the gate i always know? think i want to go back and finish san andreas and i actually bought it on steam yeah and then it doesn't have the automatic it doesn't work with the xbox 360 controller automatically and yeah. i'm just like i don't know why i spent ten dollars on this i'll never play it with yeah. the keyboard and mouse yeah, yeah i know silly yeah I know. so all next week you're you, just to clarify what you said earlier we're going to be celebrating Grand Theft Auto. It's Grand Theft Auto week on the show, yep. and we're still not sure exactly when our review is going to air because we don't have it. We don't have the game yet, which means we may have to. You know, we're not sure. Rockstar is sometimes very fussy, and it's very difficult yep. sometimes to get games out of them. We don't know when it's going to arrive, and so we're gonna we're gonna actually we'll do the best we can to get the review on the show as soon as possible. But hey, we're we're human beings. Like it takes time. It takes yeah. time to play these things and yeah, digest them and come up with thoughts. Yeah, Things we want to say. What do you, yeah. What are you doing? You're getting all wistful over there. No, I'm just. I, I, I you know, obviously, I'm. I, I've got uh, anticipation. I'm excited. I just want to jump in. The more we talk about it, the more I just want to, you know, turn everything off and just sit we down can't, and get though. lost in this. We're thing. traveling. I know. We're on the road. Unfortunately, and so uh, it's a crazy time. I mean, we uh, we've got a lot of. Uh, of, of work on the road right now, which is going to be super fun and cool, but it's, it is weird that this big, huge game is going to be coming out. What did you play on the plane? Uh, I played uh, Kill Zone, which we're going to be you talking about. You played Help soon. Ruby Get to Sleep? And a lot of Help Ruby Get to Sleep, yes. Yeah, she, yeah. Was, she was great. I actually sat two seats in front of you, and I did not hear a peep the, out the, of her. This is the new thing, man. I've never gone on work trips before where I've been able to bring my family. I mean, I did a little bit before E3. We went to Santa Monica. But this is a new deal for me. It's it's pretty cool. I've been going on these, you know, game developer visit trips for a long time, and now I've got uh, 
I've got my family with me. That's you know? nice. It's really cool. I've, it's, it's really cool. I, I got on the plane yesterday, and uh, I like a window seat, and I sat next to this uh, old lady. who She looked kind of like uh, Miserable from uh, Castle of Illusion. <laughs> And so when I got on the plane and I was running late and I, I bought one of those uh, sausage sandwiches from our favorite breakfast place and I had my cup of coffee and then I sit down and I know it stinks and I feel terrible, but I could just feel miserable sitting next to me just smelling my breakfast sandwich. She was probably hungry. She was probably enjoying the smell. She was probably kicking herself for not stopping yeah. to get... I should have bought two. You one for always her. should just like bring a whole suite of sausage sandwiches and, and, and hand them out. Just, I stunk up the whole plane with my sausage sandwich <laughs> and I didn't know what to do because I was hungry and so I eat it quickly before takeoff and uh, and then I got... I actually brought the PlayStation Vita with me. I played two games on the plane. Guacamelee. Yep. Which I was enjoying the heck out of. Incredible game. And a game called Thomas Was Alone. Also incredible. Which has great music. I don't know what the hell is happening with all of these 2D scrolling, you know, incredible experiences. The Rayman Legends on the Vita is just an absolute treasure as well. Yeah. Beautiful stuff, man. So uh, Spoiled. And I've got a, a, a controller for my damn Android tablet now. Which and you is, got a baby to play with. And a baby. Man, I played with that baby. I really enjoyed that baby. Yep, it's pretty cool, That's right? It's a fun baby. You know, yeah. Just wait till she starts coming to the interviews with us. Yeah, you know, I, I, if you can get a baby out there, by all means, get a baby. They are fun. <laughs> I, Vic lets me borrow his once in a while. She says my name now, which is so. Cute. Oh yeah, she cute. loves Scott. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, she sees Scott on TV and she Scott. I tried to sit. Scott. In, I tried to sit in her stroller yesterday, and then she didn't want me to, and she got right back in there. Yeah, that's, that's her stroller. That's her stroller. That yeah. Ruby stroller. That's right. Yeah, you should very talkative. I don't know where she got that from. Yeah. What uh, is she? What's the thing she keeps saying? Now? Uh, party time. Party time. Part- <laughs> I don't know who said Just that. Party to her. time. Party time. What kind of people? Party she had, time. Had, what kind of people is she running with? I don't know. Party time. I don't know, but it was way past her bedtime, and she kept running around saying party time. It's like <laughs> you have got to get to sleep. There was one funny moment yesterday when she put the headrest in her mouth on, yeah. the, on the plane, and you're just like, Ruby, don't do that. Don't put that in your mouth. It's dirty. <laughs> And then I picked up the headrest and I put it in my mouth. Yeah. And, and she's like, validation. <laughs> there we go. So parenting 101 fail. So PlayStation 4, thank you. Yes. Montreal, thank you for having us. We're going to be here for a few more days. And then Batman. We're, all, we're off to Tokyo. Can you thank Batman? And thank you, Batman. Batman. We're going to see Batman Arkham Origins. You'll be able to see some of that stuff. People know that? On. People know that we're going to... Can, I didn't know we could talk about that. I think so. It's a month away. We're going to the, the WB studio. I've never been to WB Montreal. I'm so excited to come to the studio and, and uh, meet people there and uh, see more of the game. I think there might even be a chance that we might have some WB Montreal people on the podcast very soon. What? Talking Batman. I can't wait. But that's it for our edition, our special edition yeah, from, from Scott's hotel. Scott's room. bed. Scott's yeah. in a robe right now. I am literally wearing this a is, robe. This is uh, this is when you wish you had video to watch the uh, podcast. Yeah. Maybe not. I keep spreading my legs yeah, trying he, to do a fatal attraction. Yeah, it's no, really, it's not fatal attraction. It's basic instinct. Basic that's instinct. The one with yeah. Sharon Stone. It's very and hot. Nobody keeps. Nobody's looking. Enzo's here with us as well. Nobody's yeah. looking. It's, I, yeah, it's very hot. And and Vic Clo- is close sitting, those legs. Vic is sitting. <laughs> Is sitting on, on the bedspread, which you know you should never sit on because you know oh, where that bedspread no. has been. No, okay, you did yeah. make it weird at the end. Thanks for listening, everybody. So long. We're on Stitcher and iTunes. Stitcher and iTunes, and I believe we're on the internet now. We, we, we hit the web. Finally, we are made it to the internet. Thanks for listening.